makers of Bufferin to relieve the minor pain of arthritis for hours. Bufferin. And now let's all play What's My Line? And now from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a talented comedian who is also the talented writer of a very funny book called Help! I'm a prisoner in a Chinese cookie factory. Here's the best cookie himself, Alan Dale. Uh, Dale! Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody knows you're king. Yes, except my wife. Uh, <laughs> I should like to introduce the very charming and talented star of the Broadway stage, this week celebrating the 500th performance of Hello, Dolly, Miss Carol Channing. Left, the eminent author, humorist, renowned raconteur, enlightened panelist, devoted family man, steadfast friend, and what is more, the president, chairman of the board, and sergeant at arms of Random House Publishing, Incorporated, with such bestsellers as The Horse Knows the Way, the Columbia College Standard Dictionary, <laughs> uh, the professor of literature, summa cum laude himself, Bennett Sir. <laughs> There goes the half hour. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so we can get on with the game, is a man who started using full sentences, unintelligible to us, at the age of seven months, and he's never stopped since, John Charles Daly. <laughs> Well, I must say, we miss Dorothy's presence tonight, but it's very nice to see Carol Channing sitting there and uh, to have the perpetual ruling house of King. Always fun to see you, Alan. Welcome to the, the family once again. We have some very interesting tricks we're going to play tonight, and we might elaborate on one of them right now. When we meet our first guest. Arlene will be blindfolded. The rest of you do not have to blindfold yourself. So, Arlene, will you please get your blindfold ready? We will also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger after this message. All right, we're ready to meet our first challenger. Arlene is blindfolded. I think, why do I get this preferential treatment? Is it possible that I know somebody they don't know? Everything is possible in this best of possible worlds. And we will now meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Miss X. That takes care of that. <laughs> All right. I would ask uh, you, Miss X, tell us where you're from. New York. New York. Oh, that's fine. Miss X, may I present the panel? And now, if you'll join me over here, why, we'll uh, let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We uh, can tell you that Miss X is self-employed and deals in a service. And we'll begin the general questioning with um, 
Arlene Francis. Self-employed, and they don't know her. Uh, and it's a girl. Imagine me having to be blindfolded for a girl. Uh, do I know you? I, ha I can... Do I know you because... <laughs> we have a relationship that nobody knows about? <laughs> I don't think we could say you have a relationship nobody knows about. No. I hope not. We hope not. So I think we'd have to give you a no on that, Arlene. Mr. I King? I don't blame you. Well, I'm going to say that I know this young lady from somewhere, someplace, and I just can't... So may I could... And, and if it does come to me, I'll disqualify myself. All right, fine. I know the face. But you don't know her uh, don't know. profession. <laughs> Well, should I? Her work. Yeah. As long Alan, as you're in the dark as to what it is our no, guest I... does, why, right. you can go ahead. Uh, well, then I gather that whatever you do, whatever the service is, that uh, Miss Francis uh, avails herself of the service. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you, uh, does it take a special training? Yes. Yeah. Uh, schooling yeah. as such? Well, you mean now formal schooling? Leading? Well, I mean a, a trade school or, you know, some... Uh, there is an element of instruction involved, yes. but you're not looking for degrees, necessarily. No. Okay, shoot. Uh, uh, do, you, do you come to Miss Francis for, uh, the, uh, does, uh, you know, for Miss Francis to avail herself of the service? Sometimes. Sometimes. You come to me sometimes? At home? Yes. At home. Uh, Are you giving anything away? <laughs> Secret? Uh, is it uh, anything to do with, um, well, with improving? Not that Miss Francis needs improving. <laughs> uh, physically. No. No, that's two down and eight to go, Miss Channing. Uh, um, do, do you have utensils in your service? <laughs> yes. Uh, now, what would you do to Miss Francis with those utensils? <laughs> I know about the rest of you, but I'm hot. <laughs> now, uh, do you, um, is your work, uh, do you work on Miss Francis physically? No. No, that's three down. I mean, that's in opposition to mentally. Yes. I don't mean opposition to mentally. That's three down to seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Axe, in the, in the course of your, uh, I trust legitimate relationship with Miss Francis, do you have anything to do with uh, either the letters that she dictates, or filing, or her financial affairs. No. no. Uh, four down and six to go, Miss Francis. You have nothing to do with me physically, and you don't have much to do with me mentally. <laughs> or spiritually. <laughs> or metaphysically. Do you come to my house fairly regularly? Uh, Somebody said, what? It depends. It depends on whether I ask you. <laughs> are you are you asked to the house, or do you come under your own steam? <laughs> I think we can say that Miss X is there because she has been asked to come. Uh, does she have anything to do with the house itself? No. Nope. Five down, five to go, Mr. King. Well, then I can rule out that this is you when you come. It is not socially. Yes. You can rule out that it's not social. Yes, rule out social. Rule out that it, rule out social. Yes, you can rule out social. Not social. So then the, the business that you were employed in has to do with your knowing Miss Francis. That's, I thought it might have been a switch or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, I know. Does it have anything to do with... Uh, if you know I, now... No, I don't know. Oh. I, no, I, <laughs> I mean, I know her and it's... You oh. at a party. He said, I meet you at a party? No, no. No. <laughs> Six down and four to go to the Oh, Senate. Carol, you owe me a no now. <laughs> Sorry. He shouldn't have repeated it. Well, uh, now, you have nothing to do with Miss Francis physically. Is your work from the neck up? <laughs> Are you implying I'm not physical from the neck up? <laughs> I'm a blockhead. <laughs> 
I guess if we're going to have to identify anatomically, we would have to agree that the the area of, of substantial interest would be that area from the neck up, wouldn't yes. you say? Yeah. It is that area physical. from the neck it's up? Not physical. Aha. Uh -huh. But it's nothing to do with improving anybody. <laughs> I mean, Alan She's asked if it was... Uh, may, may we have a conference? You have 30 seconds for a conference. Oh, no, 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 no. Sweetie, you asked if she, uh, she improve... Uh, no, I asked her if I met her at a party. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you asked her if I asked her. Why did she say she improved? Why don't you pee, Colleen? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right, she's it, a friend of Martin's, and that's why they don't want me to see it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, do you have anything to do with hair? <laughs> <laughs> but that's down. physical. Seven down and three to go. Ms. Ms. Langer. Are you connected in any way with show business? Yes. Uh, are you do do you want to do anything with uh, has anything to do with Arlene's uh, television or radio appearances? No. That's eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Have you ever had anything to do with me in the theater? Yes. Agent. Uh, did you ever get 10% of me? <laughs> no, not that one to go, Mr. King. She knew you were business. Maybe she's a standby or a... No, I think, no. I think I'm, I'm wrong, but I'm going to disqualify myself now. All right, Miss Carol? Let me write it down and see if I... Okay. Ah. Well, I'm going to throw the towel in. Oh, Wait, let me just see if it's... I've just got All right, we're, we've, we've called the game finished. What did you have in mind? Now? Are you the hypnotist? <laughs> <laughs> no. Why would I know a hypnotist? I'm on the up and up all the way. Well, <laughs> Miss Nellian Briggs is a jazz trombonist oh, and his oh. teacher, Harley, has <laughs> played it out in the front row. Lillian Briggs called me and she said, you can't take any more lessons because I have to leave town. Well, come on. <laughs> because I want to get into her act. <laughs> no, actually, Arlene has to play uh, a trombone in uh, Mrs. Daly, D-A-L-L-Y, right? Yes, Mrs. Daly. Mrs. Daly has a lover, the play that she is going to do this, this, uh, later this year, and she is learning how to play after you've gone How's that? Hey, that's pretty good. After I think he does better than you. No, <laughs> Arlene, you better I get him first. I understand it takes a lot of lip to play a trombone. How you doing? I've got the sorest ambrosure you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I explained to Miss Francis that in developing her lip, you know, she has to be very careful, that the worst thing she can do is to do a lot of kissing. Well, that's so bad. Martin's moved out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well. Let me explain that a lot of the questions are answered in the context of, of Miss Briggs is a professional trombonist herself and, and uh, has an act which she does in nightclubs and teaches Arlene. Uh, oh, she's wonderful. Massage. Yes, she is. Oh. I'm sorry I didn't recognize I wish I were the hypnotist. I could do better for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to meet you at a party then. <laughs> so would I. Yeah. Didn't you? Thank you very much, Mr. Lane. Thanks for having me. so much, my life. <laughs> Challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Burl Barheit. Is that right, sir? <laughs> All right. Mr. Uh, Barheit, where are you from? West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm Beach, Florida. All right, sir. Mr. Barheit, may I present the panel? Now, if you come over here, we'll let the audience and the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, we can tell you that Mr. Barheide is salaried and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with um, Alan King. Uh, is it, does the product that, uh, that you are involved with or the 
job that you do is have anything to do with the particular area that you live in? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Channing. That was quick. <laughs> um, uh, 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 your product, is it useful? Yes. Is it also uh, a happy thing? Is it a play thing? Is a it a play thing? Does it spread joy? Keep going, keep going. Well, the, I would say the, the, the area which you have uh, outlined encompasses a great deal, and somewhere in there will give you a yes. <laughs> it's not a mellifluous thing. I mean, it's not a ma malevolent <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, it's not malevolent. Not malevolent. No. no. But it's, uh, it's, uh, is it, can, can I hold it in my hand? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Barnhart, you say I'm correct in assuming that there's not product has not particularly anything to do with the region from which you hail. No. Uh, is this product a manufactured product? Yes. Is it a product that can be used by both sexes? Yes. Is it a product that can be obtained in stores? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Does it have to be uh, ordered, this product? Yes. Is it something that is, um, does it have any moving parts? Yes. Is there something electronic about it? Yes. Is it uh, a product that, uh, that makes a sound of some sort? Not particularly. Not, not continually? Not, not an identifiable, you know, clearly not an identifiable to be described Saparubus Tupus sound. No, that's four down and six to go, Mr. King. It is a product that I would not find in my home? No. Yes, you would not know. <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it something to do with industry? Yes. When you say something to do with industry... Well, would he sell this to a corporation or a company of some kind? For, well, uh, a company could be formed, yes, that would have a particular interest in this particular product, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's unique, or you wouldn't be on the show. Um, is, it a, uh, is it sold throughout the world? Yes. Limitedly. In a limited way, but it is, it's available elsewhere than in the United States, yes. Does it have anything to do with aiding or abetting transportation? No. Oh, yes, well, hmm, this is a bit of a, yes. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw them all over, because this is a real rough one, and you're not nothing, finding the high road. to do with Cape Kennedy, which is only several no. miles from West Palm Beach. No, this, is, this is a real tough one, and we, we, the, the line of questioning isn't getting you near it, so I'll throw all the cards in, because it's very interesting. Mr. Barhide is uh, foreman of the... Um, Perry Cub Marine Sales Company, and they make midget submarines for sport and research. Who uses them? For sport and for research. I've seen quite a few. Yeah. yeah. For, for midgets. Is it the particular? <laughs> <laughs> no, the submarines are midgets. They're made for big fellows. Is it the open cockpit as against the closed cockpit where the, the diver has to wear the uh, no, air apparatus? This is strictly dry. Strictly, strictly dry. dry. Yeah. yeah, closed cockpit and down. And the, actually, they, they get six man subs of the, the biggest yes, ones, they aren't they? do for research men. and things like that. One man. Thank you very much, Mr. Barhead. It was nice to have you with us. Tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which is, you know only too well, the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. yes. Good, will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, different form of questioning now. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we will begin all with um, Carol Channing. 
Are you in the entertainment field? Yes, Mr. Sir. <clears throat> Are you... Have you any connection whatever with the legitimate Broadway stage? Yes, I do. Miss Francis? Are you at the present time appearing in a play on Broadway? Yes. Mr. King? Is it a drama? No. Is it a musical? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Is it one of the biggest comedy hits that's come to New York in the last ten years? Well... Yes. You might say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, yeah. And are you a gentleman who used to work once with a rather stout man named Jackie Gleason? <laughs> How do you beat this man? You don't beat Art him. Carney. I do. This is terrible. All Art right. Carney. Art Carney, Art Carney is right. <laughs> I must say, though, I bet it hit it right on the spot. The Odd Couple is about the biggest comedy sensation that is... And I well, I, I, I worked up a cold and everything for this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought I... Well, when it wasn't I, I was musical, it wasn't like a drama. Range, it was, <laughs> when it wasn't a drama, it wasn't musical. Had to be you. Art, I, I saw it the other night, and it's fantastic. Thank but you. I didn't like the casting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it should have been Mayor Wagner and Governor Rockefeller. <laughs> they're going to make a movie. <laughs> oh, thank you. I didn't think you went anywhere without Walter Matthau. Mm -hmm. I thought you were a pair now. Uh, he's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning up. The well, greatest it... reviews, weren't they? Oh, they oh. were the best. Isn't it a joy to read reviews like that? I'm, I'm still this high off the ground. I haven't just settled down yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for field and stream and hunting and fishing. They have <laughs> Well, I've said it before. I, I must say, I take particular pleasure in, in uh, your success because we go back a long time. We used to do a radio program called Report to the Nation. Uh, how That's many right. years ago? Boy, a long, long years time ago. Yeah. And uh, one of his great skills, which he doesn't use as much now as he used to, is, is his ability to mine. And uh, when Winston Churchill's happy unhappy passing came, I thought of Art, because he used to be our Winston Churchill. This was uh, very much like the March of Time. We used to recreate the news. FDR, I think, was the first one. And FDR, did, oh, uh, he ran the gamut. He used to run the, the whole page. Well, bless you, and may the success go just piling up to the skies. It's lovely I wish I to see you again, Art. Earlier on, but I guess overall you get your medals tonight, and we'll all be back after this work. And now, Arlene, uh, I'm very good on the kazoo, and <laughs> if uh, you can't get up enough lip for that trombone, I'd be very happy to come and give you some kazoo lessons. But in the I'd interim, like that anyway. You, you have that anyway. <laughs> and good night to Miss Arlene Friends. Good night, dear. Good night, dear Dorothy, and I look forward to seeing you in Guys and Dolls, Alan. Thank you. That's at the city center, April 28th. <laughs> Thank you. With and Sheila McRae. With Sheila McRae. Yeah. Yes, and Carol, you're going right back to your 501st performance, and may you have 1,500 performances in Hello, Dolly. Thank you, thank you, Alan. And good luck with your with your American College Dictionary, and oh, I hope it's right the best <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'd like to know, uh, Miss Dorothy Knight, but it's a great honor to be on a panel here with three of the great comic talents of this country. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I even love you, John. Good night. Good night, <laughs> Bennett, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotman. This is Johnny Olson speaking. By the way, if you'd like to attend one of our broadcasts, write to What's My Line, CBS Tickets, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10022.